So you're confirming that accounts have been frozen, both personal and corporate. vision for public life isn't a naive dream. It could be a powerful force for change. If Canadians are to trust their government, their government needs to trust Canadians. Those are the words of the Prime Minister in 2015. These people, very often misogynistic, racist, women haters, science deniers, the fringe. Same Prime Minister six years later as he fans the flames of an unjustified national emergency. So, Mr. Speaker, when did the Prime Minister lose his way? When did it happen? The Freedom Convoy and our supporters have always denounced violence. We only support peaceful protest. We are here in peaceful, lawful protest, seeking the restoration of our fundamental rights and freedoms. All Canadians should be surprised, no matter your political opinions, that the federal government has resorted to such an extreme and authoritarian measure like the Emergencies Act, and that the government wants to use force against a peaceful demonstration. Government is issuing an order with immediate effect under the Emergencies Act authorizing Canadian financial institutions to temporarily cease providing financial services where the institution suspects that an account is being used to further the illegal blockades and occupations. This order covers both personal and corporate accounts. As of today, a bank or other financial service provider will be able to immediately freeze or suspend an account without a court order. In doing so, they will be protected against civil liability for actions taken in good faith. Federal government institutions will have a new broad authority to share relevant information with banks and other financial service providers to ensure that we can all work together to put a stop to the funding of these illegal blockades. This is about following the money. This is about stopping the financing of these illegal blockades. We are today serving notice. If your truck is being used in these illegal blockades, your corporate accounts will be frozen. The insurance on your vehicle will be suspended. Send your semi-trailers home. The Canadian economy needs them to be doing legitimate work, not to be illegally making us all poorer. Since Monday's announcement, I've spoken directly with the heads of our major banks and with the director of FinTrack. My cabinet colleagues and I are meeting regularly, very regularly, including with the Commissioner of the RCMP, to discuss next steps. Our absolute priority is ending these illegal blockades and occupation. It gives me no pleasure to impose any of these measures. In fact, we do so with great sorrow. But do not doubt our determination to act, to defend our democracy, to defend our economy, and to restore peace, order, and good government. So you're confirming that accounts have been frozen, both personal and corporate, but you're not releasing the information. And the actual follow-up is, um, I'm just wondering whether the bank accounts will be targeted of individuals who donated to the Give, Send, Go and the GoFundMe campaigns. Are they considered designated people under the Emergencies Act, meaning that their credit cards could be cut and financial services are targeting them as well? Okay, so the names of both individuals and entities, as well as crypto wallets, have been shared by the RCMP with financial institutions. 
and accounts have been frozen and more accounts will be frozen. Uh, crowdfunding platforms and payment service providers have started the registration process with FinTrack. Uh, in terms of the specifics on whose accounts are being frozen, uh, you now have the regulations. The financial service providers have those regulations as well, and they, working with law enforcement, will be making the operational decisions. Our government, shame on our government for doing this. Now, they're hurting people, veterans, like, come on. It's been, it's been peaceful for three weeks, and, like, now what? They're fucking pulling guns and shit? Like, come on, don't fucking do that. If you haven't watched my other video on Canada I recommend you watch that one as well. If you have listened closely to the people in power in Canada they have stated that the protesters didn't agree with them, had opposing views on the mandates, and that was the reason the protesters needed to be stopped. You should pay close attention to what happened because all Justin had to do was vilify the protesters, and it was over for them. Here are some top things I want you to know. 1. This protest was peaceful. At most, some of the borders were blocked and horns were honked. 2. Just hit it first, started name-calling the protesters, and was never open to talking to them or listening to their concerns. 3. Justin gave his cabinet power to freeze bank accounts of the truckers and to the people that donated to their cause. 4. He used the police to forcibly remove and arrest protesters. 5. His mandates stand even against the science. In my opinion, it is becoming more blatantly obvious that governments, big tech, and the people in power have certain agendas they are pushing. Social media, using algorithms can amplify the messages they want pushed and block all others. I would have never thought this would happen in Canada, and this is just north of the border of USA. It is sad to see that Canadian citizens no longer have a choice when it comes to their own bodies and health. Those are my thoughts, what are yours? Leave them in the comments below, please share this video for education and awareness, for the Dumb Dumb News channel, I'm Dumb Dumb.